Hey everybody, this is Nancy Rowe, Founders Advisory Board member for Renatus, and I'm sitting here with my partner Eric Counts, and you are going to watch our funding webinar. It's going to give you a little bit more information about who we are and what we do down at the Credit Nerds. We are going to talk today a few things in this webinar about who are the Credit Nerds, uh, the funding process, the types of funding that is available to the applicants, and the funds notification system. So that is the funding, underwriting, notification, and decisioning system that I made up. I am completely made up the name, but we like it because it's called funds. <laughs> okay, so this is Meet the Nerds. This is Eric's team, the guy on the left in the little bow ties, Bob Snyder. And next to him is Stephanie Counts. That is Eric's wife. Then you'll see Eric Counts and Karen. So you can see there's little names there at the bottom. I actually gave Eric the nickname of the consigliere for those of us in Chicago with the, the mob connections. Um, that is the confidant to the boss. So I'm going to have Eric kind of explain um, you know, what Karen and Stephanie do and some other people on his team as well. Stephanie, we named the matchmaker. Uh, her job uh, when this program began was to uh, take the person's file and take the assessment and truly match them to the best possible lenders to where they're going to get the highest limits, the lowest interest, the best terms, so just the overall best funding for that person. Karen, uh, the lovely woman on the right, we nicknamed The Voice. Um, anytime you call into the office, you're going to get Karen uh, 99 times out of 100. She is um, our customer service. She is the uh, governor of customer relations <laughs> here at the Credit Nerds office, and uh, she's there for you. So she's always that person on the other end of the phone helping you take that next step. So she's the voice. Now, who we are at the Credit Nerds office, we are your consigliere. We're the guide. We're the consultant. We are here to lead you along the way to make the best possible decisions about funding your file. A lot of people come in and they think, you know, why do I need help applying for a loan? There's more than that. Um, we get a lot of people, well, I've got great credit, so, you know, why do I need help applying for a loan? Actually, if you have great credit, you are who uh, has the most to lose by going out on a funding process. You have to understand how the inquiries are going to affect you, how the new accounts are going to affect your great credit profile that you've taken so long to build. You need to understand the, the way that some of those things can affect you. Uh, we are the matchmaker. Uh, it says here, Jim Lang ain't got nothing on us. For those of you that don't know, Jim Lang used to be the host, the host of the dating game. So he was one of the original matchmakers. Uh, and we are your voice. Sometimes a simple phone call can get a decline switched over to an approval, or it can get a $5,000 limit moved to a $7,500 limit. Um, we are able to work on some of the lenders on your behalf to do that on some places. Other places we would require or they would require you to have that phone call, but if that happens, we're going to make sure that you know exactly what you need to say and how you need to say it to that lender to, to put your best foot forward to hope that that happens. I also want to tell you guys a little bit about who we aren't. We are not the lender. Credit Nerds does not issue, approve, grant, or service any loan of any kind. Occasionally we get a phone call that says, hey, you guys loaned me 60 grand. And I'll say, well, no, I didn't. Um, I wish I could have. That would have been awesome. But we helped you match to a bank that loaned you 60 grand. Uh, so we're not the lender. We're just the facilitator. Uh, we are also not miracle workers. We have some really great programs out there, but 100,000 unsecured with a 40-30 credit score, you know, personal loan, not going to happen. It's just not. So we need to, uh, through the assessment process, we work with people to set realistic expectations. Um, a lot of people come in and they say, well, you know, I want a million dollars unsecured signature loan, uh, and I've got a, you know, a less than 500 credit score, no collateral and no job, and uh, I live with my parents. <laughs> so we have to have something to work with. We're going to talk a little bit in the, in the, at the, toward the end about some of the things that we can work with to actually find people loans even when you don't have the best personal credit. Uh, we are also not psychic. We must be able to view your credit report. Uh, we use a soft pool credit service called checkmy, the number three scores.com, checkmy three scores.com. And the reason we use that is because it allows us to view the specifics on your report to match you to the best lenders for you. 
Um, we have so many people that could possibly move forward with, with funding, traditional funding, with unsecured funding. The only reason that they can't move forward right now is because we can't see their credit report. And it's, it's frustrating to them. It's frustrating to us when, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty simple process to get that set up. So we're not psychic. We have to have access to that report. Talk to you guys a little bit about the funding process. Um, it goes, uh, anytime we talk about the funding process, we always have this question. Can I do this myself? Especially the people with good credit. They go, you know, hey, I've got great credit. Can't I do this myself? I'm here to be the first one to tell you, answer unequivocally, yes. You absolutely can do this yourself. Um, can being the key word that yes, you can. You can mow your yard. You can fix your own car. You can represent yourself in court. and You can go get yourself funding. But I need you to consider a few things. Uh, the first one you see down at the bottom, the number one reason for instant decline is improperly completing applications. It's not credit, it's not income, it's not debt to income ratios or utilization ratios or the number of inquiries, it's not any of those things. The number one reason for instant decline is because you improperly completed the application or applied using the wrong application. Um, banks and lenders have multiple applications that are for different types of accounts. If somebody says, okay, Eric, I'm going to go apply for a MasterCard, and they go on and they apply with one, uh, one application, that application could be linked to a MasterCard that has significantly higher approval uh, uh, specifics than another card. And if you truly match yourself to the right cards, you don't worry as much about declines. So it's completing the applications properly and completing the proper applications for the right accounts. You also need to consider things like how much funding do you want, how much do you need, and how much do you qualify for. Guys, those are usually all three different numbers. When we talk in, the, uh, in a few slides about how much funding you should work to get, you'll see why that can become so, so important. People think, well, uh, my Renatus education is $20,000, so I need to get $20,000 in, in funding. And that's just simply not the case. Um, I'll show you just a couple of slides. I won't keep you waiting too long, but I'll show you why that's not the case. Uh, where do you get your report? Do you need a lender report? Do you need a consumer report? Where do you go to get that? A lot of people come in and they go, oh, it's great, Eric. Don't worry. I've got a credit karma. And that is missing tons of information. It doesn't give you the specifics on your accounts. It's more of an overview type site. It doesn't give you what you really need to find out if you're the best fit for a particular account. Uh, what type of report? Um, what score should you look at? If you've been to any of my, um, either seen my classes in the Renatus Education, or if you've been to any of my intensives or anything like that, you know that there are hundreds of scoring models out there. Vantage scores, and FICO scores, and FICO 98, and FICO 95, and the Empirica score, and the TransRisk score, and the Equidata score, and the Credit Optic score, and there's hundreds of them. Um, which one you should look at depends on which lenders you're trying to work with. They all, or not all of them look at different ones, but many of them look at lots of different models, and some of them even have their own internal scoring models. Uh, what type of funding do you need? Some people fit better with unsecured revolving. Some people fit better with business lines. Some people fit better with personal lines. What types of funding you need basically uh, depends on your credit profile. What do you already have and how likely are you to approve for specific types as you move forward? Once you've decided what type of funding you need, who offers that type? Um, we have a website that shall not be named where people go and they try to register or, or apply for uh, credit accounts and they're going and being told what that website wants them to see. Uh, if you even scroll down to the bottom of the site it says the offers on this site are presented in the order based upon affiliate payouts from those lenders. So whoever pays them the most money they go to the top of the list pure and simple. Um, finding the right lender that offers the type of, of credit that you are actually looking for is paramount to making sure that you get what you actually need and not what a website that's getting paid based upon you filling out an application says that you need. Uh, what bureau do they use? So different lenders, guys, use different bureaus. Some lenders only use Equifax. Some lenders only use TransUnion. Some lenders only use Experian. 
uh, we track that data to the to the absolute best of our ability and we then match you based upon your credit profiles to the right lenders we have regularly uh, clients come in and they'll have uh, a 670 and a 642 and then like a 713 to where maybe they've got one negative account and that negative account isn't uh, reporting on their TransUnion credit file. It's only reporting on Experian and Equifax. So we know that if we use lenders that pull TransUnion that we have a significantly higher chance of approval and a significantly higher limit that that account will be given. So that's uh, you know another thing to keep in mind. Will it create a hard inquiry? And then also, when will that inquiry post? Some lenders do not use the hard inquiry uh, checking of your credit file. They don't, uh, well, they just don't post a hard inquiry to your report. They only use a soft inquiry. Other lenders batch post their inquiries, so they do a, a hard pull, but it doesn't actually show up on your credit file for a couple of days later. And then other lenders do an instant post inquiry to where as soon as you apply for that account, then it's instantly on your file. Now that matters because we're going to say that you're applying for six accounts and you're trying to amass as much funding as you possibly can and you start, uh, lenders one and two do only soft pull inquiries. Lenders three and four do batch post inquiries. Lenders five and six do instant post inquiries. If you start with lender six and work backwards, so you go lender six and then lender five, by the time you hit lender four or three, you're getting declined simply because of those new inquiries hitting your file. Take the other hand on that. If you start at lender one and you work with lender one and lender two, they do soft pulls. Then you work with lender three and lender four. They do batch posts, so the inquiries aren't going to show up for a couple of days. Then you work with lender five and lender six. Now you're able to get accounts with six lenders instead of just two or three. So the idea is to make sure you know which lenders are which, and that's how you're able to amass the most funding. How many inquiries do you already have? How many inquiries does that particular bank or lender allow? Uh, which report shows how many inquiries? That's another thing. On your inquiry section, a lot of people don't realize that uh, the inquiry only posts to the credit bureau that that bank looked at. So if we have a person with... Uh, great scores all the way across. Uh, we're going to work with a bank that works with Equifax, followed by a bank that works with TransUnion, followed by a bank that works with Experian, and then we're going to go back and do Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. That way, no one particular credit bureau is getting pounded with inquiries. So it keeps the inquiries at a minimum while keeping the approvals at a maximum. What types of credit do I have? Some people have lots of revolving lines and they don't have any personal lines. Maybe that person needs to look more towards some personal credit. Some people have you know, uh, no revolving lines. That's oddly, that person would have trouble get, gaining large limit revolving lines also. So they may need to look at personal credit. Some people have uh, business lines. Some people, it, it varies depending upon what's on your credit report. So that's the reason that we actually have the matchmaker. You're I'm sure you're starting to get the idea. How does that affect your approvals? Uh, what are your utilization ratios? What is your debt to income ratio? How does how do those affect your approvals? And then finally, guys, how do you access the funds without paying an arm and a leg to get a hold of them? Uh, once you get accounts, occasionally accessing cash off those accounts can be very difficult or can be very expensive. So if you've considered all of those things, then yes, you absolutely can go get yourself funding. My question then uh, doesn't really lead your, to can I do this myself as much as it's should I do this myself. Should I go out there and hit myself with six or seven new inquiries where I don't know what lender the bank's using, I don't know how their requirements are, I don't know what inquiries they're looking at, I don't know their approval specifics, but yet I'm gonna throw a whole bunch of stuff against the wall and see what sticks. So should I do this myself is the question. And then if we have any um, IMAs that have already you know, purchased their education and then they've also started working with referring new students, should I do this myself also leads itself to should I do this for my students. Can I jump in here? You, I, you can. Okay, good. My opinion on this is this is an absolute no. Um, we've seen people that have come in 
um, and Credit Nerd started working with them. They'd gotten $50,000 in approvals on a Friday. Then that person would call their mentor and say, yay, I'm so excited. Credit Nerd's got me $50,000. And then they'll say, well, you know what? You could probably get more. Why don't you go and apply to all these different sites? So over the weekend, this particular person filled out all these different applications, came back on Monday, and now all the approvals, that $50,000 that Credit Nerds had gotten for them, was now gone, and it was, you know, it was pulled away. So you have to be very, very careful, and as Eric said before, especially when people have really great credit, they are the ones that have the most to, to lose. So you have to be very, very careful. In my world, we have so much to do on the marketing side as far as finding the people and telling the story and building for events. I would much and rather- And following up. And following up, I'm so sorry. <laughs> So sorry that I would much rather have Eric and his team because they're professionals. This is what they do for a living. Let them do that. We have really no business kind of, you know, advising people on what to do unless we know. And like I said, we have plenty of other things to do. So that's my two and a half cents on that. Nice. Thank you. So we get to that question of how much to get, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Renata's combo pack, 20 grand. Yes. It's 19, 9, 90, whatever, right? But okay. I. I call it 20 grand because it it's, is, it's, it's 20, 20 grand. grand, come on, <laughs> right? So it's 20 grand and it's a very, it's money very, very well spent. I absolutely love my Renata's education, but it's not just about 20 grand. Your education, yes, 20 grand. You are going to have funding fees, guys. We're going to talk about that. It's 9.99% of the amount that you receive. You want to make sure that you have room for your funding fees so you don't have any money out of pocket. If you only get 20 grand, right? And then you have funding fees and now you have to come up with a couple thousand dollars on your own. Uh, you also can allow yourself a cushion for payments. You can utilize the line to pay for itself for a short period of time. This is not, you don't want to do this long term. It's just for short period until you can start creating income. And then also don't damage your credit, especially you good credit people. Um, if you think about it like this, how much? The answer is as much as you can feasibly get and use wisely, and here is why. Imagine that you uh, have watched my credit repair or credit maintenance classes, and you know that your utilization ratios, your indebtedness on your credit file, makes up 30% of your credit score. So you know that the more of your revolving balances, or the more of your revolving limits that you are using, the lower your credit score goes. So you go out and you get $20,000 in credit. And then you purchase your Renatus education and you make a great purchase. You love your Renatus education, but you have now maxed yourself out as far as your utilization ratios and your credit score has tanked. Now, if you were to uh, have gotten, let's say, $50,000 in credit and then you use 20, well, now you've only kicked yourself up to about 40%. And don't get me wrong, that's still just a tad high, but that's doable. That's not tanking your credit score. That's not dragging you down faster and faster every day. That still shows you with 60% of room and allows you to keep that good credit score intact. Okay? I think what you said, the use wisely, is very important because... You, you don't have to use it all, right? You're just using that and just leave it. Get yourself Absolutely. educated. Don't spend any of that money. Just stop and get yourself educated. Absolutely. Those lines can sit there. Now, we, you do need to use the line occasionally to keep it active, you know, but you don't have to use. If you get a $20,000 line, you don't have to use all 20000 of it. You, you need to use a little bit here and there. My number to keep an account active is, is usually 1% to 2%. It's also the, the best way for an account to report on your credit profile. Uh, zero balances are not quite as helpful for your credit as 1% to 2%. But keep 1% to 2% on there, that's 100 to 200 bucks, you know? Um, so we're not talking about going out and spending 20 grand to keep an account active. I'm talking about spend, it, spend the occasional $100 on there so that it shows some activity so that they don't close the account on you. Uh, and then use wisely. Wisely is a very, very key word there. Get your education so that you know what to do with the rest of the money. We've had multiple people that come through and gotten enough money to, to do a, a real estate deal. And then they purchase their essentials only and then went and did a real estate deal that they didn't have the classes or know how to do. And they were upset. Right. 
just is what it is. They were upset and they said, well, you know, this, this money's got me in trouble or, or, you know, I didn't really use this right. Guys, use it wisely. Get your education first. Then, once you've gone through your education, use the leftover for, for real estate deals. All right. Funding fees upon approval. I told you I would tell you. Uh, our funding fees are very, very clear. There's no down payment, extremely limited documentation, up to 100K or more. Does require good credit. I put that in red and in, in, in quotes. And then when I said good, I did air quotes. You can't see it. <laughs> you, I did. <laughs> I did air quotes. You can't see them, but I did them. It requires good credit. You're still doing it. The reason I'm saying <laughs> good credit is because it's not score-based, okay? These types of loans are not score-based. So it's not saying, you know, if you have a 700 plus, you're getting approved, or if you have a 690 or below, you're getting declined. That's not the way it works. We have had people with, you know, mid-range 600s that received unsecured funding, Right? We've had people with above 700s that have been that weren't able to receive unsecured funding. So it's not about a score, it's about the content of the file and that's what happens in the assessment uh, process. We go through um, the, the utilization ratios, we go through the debt to income ratios, we go through the previous, uh, uh, the previous credit cards that you may have access to, we go through previous personal lines you may have access to. We utilize those things to know uh, what you can and can't do and where you can and can't fit with certain lenders. And when we do all of that, the funding fees are 9.99% of the funding amount received. So if you were to receive, um, just uh, let's say, let's say you received a thousand dollars, your funding fees would be 99.90, you know, hundred bucks. So uh, it's based upon what you are able to procure. Now, there we go. It didn't want to move the slide I saw on. That. I, I want to tell you why 9.99% is lower than you think, okay? If you do it yourself, you're looking at limited approvals, a lot of wasted time and inquiries. We talked about applying for the wrong accounts or applying for the accounts in the wrong order. That's what I'm talking about there. Uh, if you access the money, you're going to have a 3% check fee. Now, you are going to have $0 in funding fees, so 3% for accessing cash. That seems lower. Let's look at, let us handle it. Average 15 to 20% higher limits. That's not including the fact that we're going to average... Um, you know, probably 50% more limits, or excuse me, more more approvals because we're applying for the accounts in the right order. Uh, it's the right accounts at the right time. Uh, we will waive the check fee for you to access those funds. 9.99% funding fees. So the 3% seems lower than 9.99, but it's not. And here is why. Take a look at this. Do it yourself. 30 grand. Check fee, 900 bucks. Cash advance rate, 29.99%. Funding fee, zero. Total for one year of funds, 59.88. So if you held that money on there for one year at 30% nearly, cash advance rate, some cards, yes, I know the average right now is actually 25.99 or something like that, but still, you get the idea. It's a lot. We handle that, 30 grand, let's just say. We waive the check fee. We're going to be able to liquidate the accounts for you so you get them at 0%. You get to keep that 0% for your 9 to 18 months. Uh, the vast majority of accounts that we work with are 0% for 9 to 18 months and some even up as far as 21 months. Um, so you're looking at a funding fee of $29.97, 0% on the interest. So after one year, you would have still only paid $29.97 and not $59.88. Now, another thing to, uh, to remember is that this $29.97, guys, is a, is an, a cost of doing business. Now, I'm going to throw out my disclaimer here and say always speak to your accountant, but this can be written off as a business expense if it works in your business, which... I, I want to say, you know, as you know, Scott and I have raised millions of dollars for projects that we've done, I would spend money every day to have somebody go out there to be able to get me these lines. And a lot of these lines I'd be able to use over and over and over again. So this is an investment in being able to get those those lines. So, um, and when you take the tax and legal class, Mark explains to you on how these you know are deductions for your business. So just something to keep in mind. Absolutely. Uh, this is something I like to throw out. I know this card the the cash advance rate is twenty five point two four percent. Penalty APR is 29.99%, but the thing I really wanted to show you, we'll begin charging interest on cash advances and balance transfers on the transaction date. And also, this is another account. 
We will begin charging interest on balance transfers, cash advances, and overdraft account uh, advances on the transaction date. And then I always forget to show this, Nancy. Yeah, you you know like what? me to... This is my favorite part because this is something that most of us that don't know about credit are extremely uneducated about. Penalty APR. That is up to 29.99% if you make a late payment. There it is. Make a late payment or a payment that's returned. And then that rate, guys, can stay indefinitely up to 29.99% for many accounts based on your credit worthiness. APR will vary with the market based on prime rate up to 29.99%. Let me give you a hint. When it says up to, it's going to be 29.99%. Uh, talk, talk about a late payment uh, and how specific they can be. Because remember, these lenders don't really like to give out their money without making money in return. So they put these little... So you're telling me to tell my 430 story? Not your 430. I'll but tell a, my 430. A regular... A um, hypothetical. A hypothetical person. If there was a person <laughs> that owned a company named Credit Nerds <laughs> and he had a credit card that had a due date of... Uh, the seventh or whatever, and he paid that on the seventh, but he paid it an hour and a half late. Let me just let this is weird. This third party thing. I have a, I had a credit card, <laughs> and um, the payment was due on. I, I'm making up the date, but call it the seventh, right? Right. And what I didn't realize was it, it's due by um, four third or five o'clock um, Eastern time on that day. And I paid that account at 4.30, my time, which is central time, on that day. And I was called late. I was like 30 minutes past the time. So I was called late. They, they increased my interest rate. I lost my 0%. And it went up significantly, enough to the point that I closed the account. And pay, I paid off the account and closed it and said, well, I won't be you know, doing any more business. They, but they moved it for, for 30 minutes late. And we've seen it. Even some of your students have been posting stuff on Facebook and mm -hmm. stuff saying thank you so much for letting us know these little tactics that they use. So just remember, you have a 0% interest, but you need to make sure that you understand what it keeps or what it takes to keep that 0%. Right. Exactly. Now, moving on. The funding process. Didn't we already use this slide? Yep. Yep. I needed it again. It's a great slide. The funding process, inviting an applicant to get funded online.com. Uh, a lot of you guys may possibly already be IMAs with the Renatus organization. If you are, that's great. Uh, we allow you to utilize the fund system that we're going to go over in just a few minutes. We allow you to utilize that system to invite people so that it automatically registers them to you and we know how to uh, let you know when their funding is received. We'll show you how to do that. Registering for an assessment on getfundedonline.com. That's a really simple process. It takes about five minutes to get done, and we can show you how to do that really quickly. Um, most of you guys have probably already registered for an assessment, and that's why you might be watching this webinar. Um, if you have not registered for an assessment yet, that's perfectly okay. We'll show you how to do that in just a second. Uh, understanding your assessment and funds. So that's going to be understanding what it looks like after my team has gone through that credit file and we put it into a really super easy to read report that you then have a clear understanding why you are or aren't a good fit for a specific account. And then how to follow up with uh, your applicants. If you're an IMA or if you are uh, an applicant and you're, and you're interested in receiving funded, funding, then we're going to show you what some of the statuses mean that we will assign you so you know what you where you are in your process as well. So it can either be following up with you know your your applicants, your students, or following up with your own process. So it's it's a kind of a either one there. It's either going to be the applicant's status or your status. Awaiting assessment. What this means is that the person has registered for a funding assessment and we are working on getting that assessment done. Guys, the assessments during business hours are usually done very, very quickly, 20, 30 minutes a lot of times. Um, after business hours, they're done the following day, and that is the following business day. We are not open on Saturdays or Sundays, um, and we work from 9 to 6 Central Time. So if you have, uh, you know, if you register in those time periods, then then we'll get that done very, very quickly. If you're outside of that time period, it's going to be the next business day. 
Uh, just to clear up, awaiting assessment, guys, just me. It, it kind of means hold your horses for just a second. It means, <laughs> whoa, slow down. We're getting to you. Hold on just one second. The next status that we're going to tell you about is invalid report. Guys, this is the most frustrating status because this status means that you could be moving forward if we could just access your report. What we do is utilize a system called checkmy3scores.com. Here it is right there on the left and beside the yellow uh, diamond. Checkmy3scores.com. We use that one because it provides a full clear picture of the credit report. It is not an overview site. Uh, the Credit Karmas, the Quizzles, the Credit Sesame, some of those, those free sites, uh, you know, where you can, you can get your credit report without a credit card or whatever. Those free sites, guys, are, they're free for a reason. They're built to market to you. And one of the things they market is additional credit offers, which, you know, we told you to already be careful about what you're applying for online. And they also push their full services. So they want to sell you that expanded report. So it's not free. The report we need is never free. Uh, credit Nerds does not own any of these sites. We don't own Check My Three Scores. I don't own Credit Karma. I don't own Quizzle. I don't own uh, any of the others that I don't really feel like naming because it <laughs> doesn't even matter. Uh, we don't own those. Uh, and we also do not charge for any of those monitoring sites. The monitoring site itself does charge a fee. We work with all of our uh, people to show them how to get that fee discounted uh, very heavily. But it's not credit nerds charging a fee. It's the monitoring account charging the fee. So we uh, just want to be very, very clear that we are not charging in any way for an assessment. And it's usually a dollar for a week Yeah, it's trial. a dollar for a one-week trial. If you decide to move forward with funding, we do need you to keep that service active until your funding process is done. A lot of people are done within their week trial. Right. Um, the average time from somebody that comes in until their assessment is completed, and this is, you know, if they're providing all the, ac all the access to their credit report, they're getting back with us. The average time right now is running six or seven days from the time that they do their assessment to the time that, you know, we're done with their process. That's pretty awesome. Right. If, uh, if I don't want to tell on ourselves, <laughs> but when this program first started, it was like 40 days. Yeah. It was, it, I mean, it was 30 to 40 days back in the, back in the day. You guys have tightened it up. So We've tightened so. this ship up a lot. And it is uh, averaging about six, six or seven days. So those are two uh, statuses, awaiting assessment, invalid report. A couple more that we'd like you to be aware of is assessment complete. Um, if your status is assessment complete, that means we're trying to talk to you. Um, if your student's status is assessment complete, that means maybe give them a little nudge and say, hey, credit nerds would like to talk with you. Assessment complete means that we have completed the assessment and we are trying to contact that person to go over it with them. Um, we, we do these free assessments and then we actually go over it with them. So it's a value add, especially they have an expert uh, credit assessor that's going over that assessment with them. If they have any questions, they can say, okay, well, you had a couple of dings here and, and we will be glad to talk to you about A, what you can do, how you can do some things on your own to, to improve that, pro, that status. And then also, if you happen to need it, absolutely we might tell you about our credit repair service so um, you know no hard sells or anything like that but if somebody needs our service then that's you know kind of where the the back end of this whole process comes in and as far as business goes I tell my secrets a lot that's the reason we're able to do these assessments for free is because when somebody needs the help for credit we're here for them so it's a lead source for us as well Appro approved for fill in the blank program um, that is really got, I mean, that has got to be the most self-explanatory status. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much we need to put in there, except it won't actually be a blank. It'll say a name. Right. <laughs> It'll say it. approved for blank, you know, whatever program. Um, awaiting docs. This is another one that is kind of like the invalid report, only like only worse in the frustrating realm <laughs> because awaiting docs means these people are getting, like they're going to funding process. They're gonna be, like we can't, I can't guarantee that these people are getting money, but they've been matched and we're very, 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 very successful. Once we hit awaiting docs, the likelihood of them not receiving funding is extremely low. Right. Extremely, extremely low. So if they're awaiting docs, that means they're a good fit. We've matched them to lenders. We're, we're most likely 
very, very likely going to be able to get them funding. And all we're waiting on is them to fill out some e-docs. They're in their email. They go in. They fill in their name and their and you know click that they agree to some uh, uh, you know um, terms and terms conditions. and conditions, and then click submit. That's it. It, I mean, those docs can be filled out in a couple minutes tops. And they are time sensitive. And right? they are time sensitive. They expire at 10 days. So um, if somebody's in a waiting docs, or if you are in a waiting docs, that gives you 10 days to fill those out. And it's going to be 10 days of getting phone calls from my office every day and getting emails from my office every day and your mentor calling you every day. <laughs> because we want you to have the best chance at success. And that's done by getting the funding you need at the right time with the right accounts by using somebody that knows what they're doing. True story. All right, types of funding available. Funding types. Unsecured lines. Most come in the form of credit cards. These lines have very low minimum payments and no set repayment terms. Guys, we have accounts that are unsecured that range from you know, 700 plus credit scores down to low 600 credit scores. Um, this is not, you know, the just go out and apply for the first credit card you see online types of, of unsecured funding. There's lots of different sections in there. So keep that in mind. Personal loans. These tend to have a higher payment, but lower interest. You kind of think about these more like um, a car loan. You know, it's, the, it's this many dollars for this many months, and then you've paid it off and it's done. It's just like that, only it's also an unsecured line. So you'd be a signature loan. It's this many dollars for this many months at this interest rate. Now, I do want to say also the personal loans are going to have uh, an overall lower interest rate, but it's going to start on day one. Uh, most of the unsecured lines have an overall higher interest rate, but they have usually 9 to 12 to 18 to 21 months of 0%. So uh, all the way down to that, you know, that, that low 600 uh, line, even that line comes with 0% for six months. So those unsecured lines are usually going to have a 0% intro term followed by normal credit card rates, which may range from, you know, 8% to 18%, depending upon credit. Um, the personal loans, those are going to usually flow a little bit lower interest, but they're going to start on day one. And then business lines. This is where there's a little bit of confusion, so I want to be really clear. There are two types of business funding out there. One for startup businesses, and another for current, active, and successful business owners. And when I use the words active and successful, I don't mean that you run and that you have a happy home life. <laughs> because, you know, there's these new age versions I of know. successful. Well, I'm... I'm, I'm healthy and I'm happy, so I consider myself a, a successful person. And you know what? I do too. I consider I yourself... Agree 100%. Yeah, absolutely. But the bank does not agree <laughs> with you. Um, successful means that your business has some cash flow. It doesn't have to be a lot, but it has some cash flow or it has some revenue. It has some equipment. It has, uh, you know, a, a, a current built out... Paydex and, and IntelliScore, it's got business credit behind it already. It has something going for it. Maybe it has some invoices that it could factor out. It has something there. That's what the bank means when they say active and successful. So that means you're currently doing business and taking and receiving payments into an account that is in your business's name. Was that clear enough, Nancy? That was really good. Yeah. So if you don't currently... Uh, take payments in your business name. You don't have any invoices. You're, you know, you're just starting your business. That's okay. We have business lines for startup businesses, but those are going to be personally guaranteed. So those are going to require a good credit profile. And I'll tell you just a little bit more about that in one second. Personal loans, structured payment installment loans. They're based on your credit profile with some financials. So these tend to ask for maybe a pay stub or a utility bill, something that's going to prove your address, prove your income, things like that. So there are some financials involved, but not, you know, heavy out, you know, three years tax returns, nothing like that. Pay stubs, bank statement, you know, something like that. They tend to carry a lower interest rate. You can get these at traditional banks, credit unions, peer-to-peer -peer places, secured options, short-term loans. There's lots of different things out there that range from really great loans to really, hear me out, they range from really great to really awful. <laughs> right. right? There's loans that I personally wouldn't accept, but 
I've built the profile to not have to accept those kinds of lines. And there are people out there that haven't quite built themselves a profile yet where they wouldn't have to accept those kinds of lines. So is it a bad idea to accept a short-term kind of high interest loan? Well, that depends on if you have a plan for that money. Uh, the money only costs whatever you didn't make off of it. So if you have an option to get your education and utilize that and properly uh, start your IMA um, uh, marketing and you start making some money and you can pay that off or you do a, a, a real estate deal and you pay that off and you get those taken care of in a short term time, then they're really not that expensive. A lot of people look at some loans and they go, oh my gosh, this is this is 300%. And you go, yeah, but it's it's only this this long. You know, it's only for two weeks. Right. So when you look at it, the whole cost of the loan is, is $112. Right. You know? I've, I've done a real estate transaction where, you know, we had higher interest from a private lender because we needed some extra cash really quick. But I worked those numbers in, and I still made $53,000, and it's right. a write-off for me for that interest. So it can be um, a, definite, a definite mind shift right. in what you're used to. So look at all the options. If you, if you do have a little bit of a damage profile and some of those, loan, you know, some of those offers come out to you, um, look, at, look at what the cost is versus the opportunity cost. Right. All right. Unsecured lines tend to be the holy grail of funding. If you know some of the things that you can do with unsecured lines, I'm sure you understand why that is. They're very, very helpful. You can use them over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, they're based on your personal uh, financials and credit profile. However, very, very uh, limited documentation, if any. So um, when we're talking to you about these lines, we're going to talk to you about household income. We're going to talk to you about where you work and how long you've been there. Uh, and we need the truth, guys. I'm not saying to not be truthful by any means, we do need the truth, but we're not going to come back on you and go, hey, we need bank statements and we need tax returns, tax returns and we need, you know, profit and loss sheets and we need all these things. Um, but, you know, again, we still do need the truth. I'm not telling you to lie by any means, just uh, we, we don't come back and look for all those things. The majority of lines come in the form of credit cards, but they could also come as check lines and overdraft accounts. That's not to be confusing at all. A check line is just a line of credit that comes with a check book uh, that you can... Um, have checks against. Right. That's it. An overdraft account is actually an account that works um, where you can have a negative or positive balance. And an overdraft account, you can. It's kind of like a bank bank account. You can be putting money in and putting money in, adding it to your overdraft account. And then let's say you've got a thousand dollars in there, and you use uh, your account for a fifteen hundred dollar purchase. Well, now you're just going to have negative five hundred. And, the, and it's it's still a ch uh, credit line, still works, you know, it still just carries an interest. It's exactly the same. It just does allow you to have a positive balance. Uh, those are no doc, fast approvals, very, very fast approvals. You can use the lines over and over and over again. The monthly payments are usually really low, 1% to 2% of the balance. So if you have um, uh, 25000 um, dollars out there, uh, I don't. What's one to two percent of that? Come on, ten percent would be twenty five hundred. Your two hundred fifty dollar payment. Yeah. So twenty five thousand dollars out. You're looking at a two hundred fifty dollar payment. And those lines can come in. Uh, I mean, they can be so helpful. I mean, I've opened up a wall and we had an eight thousand dollar. Oops. Yeah. And those things come real in handy. Right, especially when you start getting into some of those real estate processes and you realize that you you think you've factored in for all of the repairs. And then this happens. Absolutely. Um, business lines. Guys, we're going to look at the two types of business lines. Existing businesses, no personal credit check. Business financials, however, are required. This might be bank statements or it might be profit and loss. It might be, you know, um, your Schedule C. It's Some business financials are going to be required because there's no personal credit check. Think about that. If they're not going to check your personal they, and if they're not going to check your business, why would anybody lend money without checking? You wouldn't. Right. The bank doesn't either. So they're going to check one or the other. If the business is strong and, and has a good structure to it, then you can get money without a personal credit check. If your business is not strong, you're going to have to require a personal credit check. Pure and simple. Uh, the great thing is that while they are completely different, they are also both 9.99%. So it's the same fees. Um, either way, one of the great things about the startup business lines, however, 
the ones on the right side of your screen right now. You see where it says in red, reports if it becomes negative. Right above that, it says non-reporting business lines. What you're looking at with those types of lines is the ability to utilize the balances without affecting your overall utilization ratios. And go back six or seven or eight or 10 or 14 slides ago, uh, we talked about how if you don't utilize the lines properly, it can damage your credit score significantly. These lines will only report to your personal credit if they become negative. So as long as you're paying them on time, you don't have to worry about that balance dragging down your personal credit profile. Those, it's, it's built that way on purpose. A, a personal credit report isn't built to hold the type of uh, balances that a business can hold. So as long as those are non-reporting, then they're not affecting your personal utilization ratios. And uh, we're going to do a little housekeeping. And bef uh, as soon as we do that, I'm going to log out. Actually, should we do that first? Let's, yeah, let's, let's do, do that, that first. I'm going to do an escape here. It's going to be a little weird for uh, how these normally go because I'm just going to jump out to my, to my desktop. And I'm going to jump on to getfundedonline.com. And when you log in, there's a video that plays. I've got the video paused. Um, but when you're looking to register for a uh, funding assessment, you're going to see a button right here that says Get Started Now. Or you're going to see this that you can get started on, or you're going to see this that you can get started on. My screen's off because I had it on double screens here, but it's, it's usually centered. Uh, but this button that says Get Started Now, you give that a click. It brings it down. There's a video. Guys, watch these videos. If you have not yet registered for a funding assessment, watch the videos because they walk you right through and they make it very, very easy to understand what it is that you're doing. Hey everybody, Eric Counts, owner of creditnerds.com, founder of getfundedonline.com. I wanted to take just a second and let you know what you're about to do. You're gonna register for a funding assessment. Now it's important to remember this is not an application for funding and it is not an application for credit. It's simply an opportunity for us here at the Credit Nerds office to take a closer look at your file and help you decide which program out of our many funding programs that will best fit your funding goals. Now, I've created a short series of videos that are going to help you navigate through each step. So as soon as you're ready, click continue on the bottom right and we will get started. Okay, so um, my screen recorder, I think, is affecting my refresh rate of that video, but you get the idea. We're going to click continue. And it's going to say, choose your enroller. In this step, you're going to choose your funding enroller. Now, your funding enroller is the person who first originally introduced you to Renatus. Uh, below this video, there is a drop-down that will have a list of all the enrollers that are available for you to choose. Some of you may have received a unique link from your enroller, and if so, your enroller's name will already be in that drop-down for you. If you don't see your enroller's name, you can simply click, my enroller is not listed. Below that will be a checkbox that says, would you like guidance from your enroller and your mentor group along the way? This will allow them to have access to us and your assessment to know what type of funding options are available to you and how they can help you move forward. After that, simply click next and we'll move on to some personal information from you and you'll be set. Okay, so I chose Nancy Rowe as my funding enroller. Now, Nancy Rowe is, um, very rarely somebody's funding enroller. Uh, usually it is somebody who is um, actively doing a lot of marketing stuff. Nancy tends to be more of a facilitator, but for this particular choice, I'm going to choose Scott and Nancy Rowe. Um, I would like guidance and next. Now I'm just going to put in some, uh, some information here. We're going to use Tesley Snipes because he's my favorite. Uh, we're going to do an email at this.com and a phone number and another phone number and an address and a city and a state. Where do you want to be from, Nancy? Illinois. Illinois. Uh, 60641. Anything close? That's Chicago. That's Chicago. That was nice, right? It's real nice. Um, I'm going to drag this little um, selector here to my monthly income before taxes. So I'm going to say 50, you know what? I'm going to say $10,000 because I feel happy today. <laughs> um, I'm going to say I make $10,000 a month. <sighs> so then I'm going to put in a password and I'm going to select um, uh, this as my password. Don't steal my password, Nancy. I won't. I close my eyes. Next. Okay, good. All right. 
Okay guys, this step is going to be a little tricky. It's the one that gives most people some trouble. So what I'd like you to do is watch the whole video before you move forward. Below, there are two buttons. One says, get my credit report. The other says, I already have mine set up. What these are for is to get access to a credit monitoring service. This will allow us at the Credit Nerds office to view your credit report without generating what is referred to as a hard inquiry on your file. That means when we look at your credit report, it won't damage your score or uh, negatively affect you in any way. Now, if you click Get My Credit Report, a new tab is going to open on your screen. It's going to take you to CheckMy3Scores.com, which uh, will allow you to sign up to view your report. Once you have done that, simply close that tab, and this tab will still be open. And below, there will be a box to insert the username and password that you set up for the monitoring service. Now, if you have already done that, you can simply click, I already set mine up, and it will then open up the boxes to allow you to insert your username and your password. Remember, guys, this is the username and password for your credit monitoring service at CheckMy3Scores.com. If you put that in there, we'll be able to view your report and we'll help you uh, get on to the next step. The last step is simply some confirmations that says that you understand what we're here for and how we're helping you. So once you click next, you'll be all done. Thanks, guys, and we look forward to helping you reach your funding goals. Okay, great. So um, that, that was me making some funny faces because of my refresh rate here with my screen recorder. <laughs> um, if you click Get My Credit Report, you will notice up here a new tab check my three scores.com open get your free credit scores okay now when I close that tab this is still open and now there's two boxes check my three scores.com email so the email that I used right dot com and the password that I used I used uh, password one two three when I set that up so this is going to allow us to log in at that monitoring service so that we can view your credit file so next, I understand I'll be required to maintain my monitoring service throughout my funding process, okay? I understand there are fees associated with these programs that will be discussed before I apply. Uh, those are the 9.99 fees, unless we have a couple of other programs where they, the 9.99 is the maximum. We have a couple of other programs that are actually a little less. Um, uh, we have one program in specific, uh, that I'm specifically thinking of that only has um, an admin fee of $95. So even if you get a, you know, a $7,000 line, the admin fee is still $95. So, uh, that's the 9.99 is the maximum the fees will ever be. So I understand getfundedonline.com is not a lender or servicer, correct? And I understand getfundedonline.com is not directly affiliated with or compensated by Renatus in any way. And I always like to stop here because I want to point out that we are not affiliated with or compensated by Renatus but I want everyone to know that Renatus is also not compensated or affiliated back from us. There's no backdoor deals, there's no kickbacks, there's no points, there's nothing like that between Credit Nerds and Renatus. We are simply two separate companies that have created a great working relationship. So, uh, you know, don't think that somebody's making money back at Renatus or that, you know, we're making money off your Renatus sale. Nothing like that's going on. Our fees are our fees, their fees are their fees. Submit my application and fund my new life. There you go. You're all set. And, oh, I didn't check that. There we go. Now, you are all set. Application has been received. We'll be cont contacting you by email. That's the process. It's really that simple. So as long as you can, you know, uh, go through and click a couple of buttons and type in your name, you'll be set. Now, as far as the uh, fund system, when you go to login, there's two options, IMA login or applicant login. We're going to be combining these to one login because they work the same now. So when you click these, they both go to the same place. But we're going to log in as an IMA. So this is if you, um, there we go. This is if you are an IMA and you are referring students over to get their funding. So I'm going to log in as IMA at creditnerds.com, sign in. I have a button here that allows me, my screen's crazy, there we go, 
I have a button here that allows me to invite, right? And when I click invite, it says a prospective student or a, another IMA. If I click prospective student, I just put in their name and their email address and it sends them out a link. And if they use that link, then that person gets to skip the step where it says enter your, your funding enroller. It'll already be in there for them. That's that simple. And then the last thing that I want to show you is the uh, logging in as an applicant. If I were an applicant, I can log in. And this is how I view my assessment. It's up here, my assessment. Uh, this person has 800, 860, and 900 scores. Very, very good scores on a scale from 300 to 850. So if you have a 900 on a scale to 850, you are doing fantastic. So clearly these are not real scores. Uh, inquiries, this person's fine. Utilization ratio, this is high. It's 100%. Public records or known issues. If you have known issues, they're all going to show up right here. Guys, it's really just that simple. There's a messaging section that allows you to ask my team questions. There's a training section that you can watch the video on how to register for a funding assessment. I talk some BK, uh, the effects of BK on your credit report. I discuss FICO versus Vantage. There's going to be lots of these videos in here over the next um, couple of weeks. So that is the entire process. That's it. Easy breezy. Easy breezy. If you have any questions, Get Funded Online is a great source. It's going to talk about who we are, the different programs, some costs. The FAQs, guys, they are there for you to see, to read. We, want, we don't want anything to be hidden uh, in the process. We want you to have a full understanding of what we're going to do because if you truly understand what we do, then you'll understand why there's a value and why there's a fee. People that don't understand what we actually do are the people who wonder about the value or the fee. Especially people that have great credit and a great profile, you got to protect that. And when Absolutely. you start going, running around and, and trying to figure it out and not know, knowing what you're doing, it will affect you. Um, just to kind of capitalize on that, you know, when the, the how much to get, we talked about, let's say a person has the option, they've got that great credit profile, mm -hmm. and they have an option to get $75,000. Right. Right? And they say, no, I just want to get 25000 that's all I want to get. I want to get $25,000. And we go, okay, you know, I understand. We are, we're not going to make you do anything you don't want to do, but right. here you go. We get you $25,000. That person then goes and they pay their funding fees of $2,500 roughly, and then they go and use their education. They get twenty grand. they are basically maxed out. Then they come in and they go, Eric, you know what? You were right. I definitely should have got that seventy five. dollars I'll go ahead and take that other fifty. dollars They can't get it anymore. They could have before. They could have before. Right. But now they've got brand new accounts, brand new files, brand new inquiries, and they're maxed out on their current open accounts. Right. So if you ever heard the phrase, get while the getting's good? <laughs> That's a Southern thing. That's a it. Southern thing. <laughs> we have a Southern phrase that's called, get while the getting's good. <laughs> and when that person first starts, the getting's good. It's the, they're able to get the majority of the credit that they would ever need. The, the problem is people kind of think they have to use it. So just remember, get the credit while you're able. You don't have to immediately go use it. Right. But get it while you're able because if you only get a little bit and then you use that credit, getting more is extremely difficult. It's my new favorite phrase. Get while the getting's good. Yeah. Guys, I am Eric Counts, the owner of CreditNerds.com, and kind we of the... We still have some other stuff to go over. Oh, right? we've got some. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just a little housekeeping really quick. Just a quick, little so. bit of housekeeping really quick. Thanks for hanging out with us. Absolutely. I promise it'll be quick. Let's go from current slide. Perfect. I'll handle this. So just as a reminder, these funds are for education and real estate purposes, right? So when people get this money, it's designed for them. If they're getting $30,000, it's not designed for them to take $2,000 and get their essentials. It's designed for them to get the whole extreme um, combination tuition. And then they'll have that extra money, as Eric was talking about, to be able to do real estate transactions and stuff with. So it's very, very important that people understand that that's what this is designed for. We also have some lenders that... Um, are very particular and that money goes directly to Renatus. Right? Absolutely. And they've checked out Renatus, they've gone through the curriculum, you know, they've looked at financials. So, you know, we've created these relationships with, you know, Eric and the funding partners specifically for these two things. So we need to make sure that everyone's in line with that and we're using it for what the purpose of getting these funds is for. Right. For some of the for some of the people out there that it's kind of akin to if you were to go and get a loan for a home and the bank believes that that loan is for that home, and then you don't buy said home. And then you go to Vegas. And then you go to Vegas, right? <laughs> if you get money for something, the, the lenders 
want you to use that money for what it's meant for. Perfect. Um, this may seem very simple, and and but I'm going to say it. Be nice. The credit nerds are here to help you. Sometimes people get really frustrated, um, and it, they don't mean to, but they may take it out on the team here at Credit Nerds. So always remember, you get more with honey than with vinegar. Be nice. They're here to help you. But if you, you or some of your students don't necessarily have a great profile, it's not necessarily their fault, and they will do whatever they can to help improve the situation. But just make sure that you're being nice. Do you want to add anything I do. That? I do a little I bit. I knew you would. I can um, see. <laughs> well, the idea is I'm very open and clear about the way that we do our business. And, right. you know, I tell people how we make our money and – it because uh, I, I feel like we it's very transparent guys we make our money by getting you the most money as we possibly can the more money we get you the more money we make so if we come to you and say you know hey I know that you were talking about needing 60 grand we were only able to get you 23 grand don't be uh, mad don't be mad <laughs> it's that was your profile we wanted to get you as much as we possibly could we we are how people get the the most money that they possibly can. If you had any possibility of getting 60, trust me, we would have utilized it because we wanted to make the funding fees off 60, not off of 23. Basic math. It's basic math. So if there's a problem with your file and, the, and your file can't get funded, remember, you didn't pay for the assessment. You didn't pay for us to try. If there was problems getting you funding, you didn't pay anything. So trust me, we want to get you funding as much as you want funding. Right. Um, check the notes, then chat, then call. So a lot of times people aren't familiar with the fund system, and we've really made this to be more system dependent than mentor dependent or anything like that. So before you call down to Credit Nerds, go into the system. There's an internal notes and there is a notes section. Just make sure that you check that first. If you don't see anything in there and you still need an update, there's a little chat button. You can actually chat in. And then if you don't have anything from there, then always feel free to call in. But the more that they are working on getting people funding and helping improve our students' you know, credit profiles, the better it's going to be for everyone. So if we don't draw all the time out of them having to answer basic questions that could have been answered with just a quick peek in their, in their fund system would be extremely helpful. Absolutely. Uh, no blind three-way calls. Now, we love three-way calls. I just want to make that clear. Um, but you want to make sure that if you have someone, it's common that someone will say, I don't necessarily know what kind of questions to ask them. Nancy, would you mind you know, getting on the phone with me and calling down to credit nerds? And we love that as well. They love that. But you just need to make sure that you are disclosing who is all on that call, right? So mm -hmm. if I'm having a phone call and I have Eric here, I call Karen. Karen answers the phone. And I say, hey, Karen, it's Nancy Rowe. I'm sitting here with Eric Counts. He had a couple of questions, asked me to be on this call. So Eric, go ahead and ask your question, or I can ask the question. But you just need to make sure because we have privacy laws and things that we need to make sure that everybody understands. So just right. let everybody know who's on the phone and then we're good. Absolutely. And that's it. Else? Nope. That was pretty easy. That was great. Right? Okay, cool. So um, for those of you, like I said, if you have any questions, you can go back to the person that invited you. You can always go to Get Funded Online. If you want to get started with your assessment, feel free. There's a number there that if you have any questions, you need to call down to the credit nurse team. They'll be happy to help you. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me. I had a great time. I hope that this provides people a little more education and a little more understanding of what we do and the value right. that we bring. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, everybody, thank you so much, and um, we'll see you soon.